everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much to my subscribers. Welcome newcomers. I hope you like what you see. And if so, be part of this journey with us. We are growing one big family. Thanks to all of you. And I am so grateful and humble by your beautiful comments and your uplifting messages. Thank you so much. Okay. So we're going to just touch a few uh, things. Um, so if the video is too fast for you, up top there's three little buttons. You can click there, slow down the video to the speed you'd like. Also, you can turn on your CC closed caption um, and you can read whatever stitch I call out down here. Take notes, pause the video and you take it from there. It makes it more easier for people that have a hard time to follow YouTube. I also would like to mention that I do have a crochet group on Facebook. It's a private group. I will leave the links below if you want to be part of my group. Uh, we're, you know, a bunch of beautiful ladies. You're more than welcome as long as you have a profile. There's a lot of scammers going on to the crochet groups right now, and especially with the links that says bit or cut. Don't open those links up. Those are scammers that go through your computer, through your phone, and steal every identity possible from you. So be very careful on that. Um, I also would like to mention, if you'd like to donate to help out the women in need for Thread, please do so. Below the video, there's a little bag with a dollar sign. You can donate there, whatever amount you'd like. Also, in the description box, there's my PayPal account. You can don donate there, whatever amount you'd like. Or, if you have extra Thread and extra yarn, you can contact me through Instagram message, email me. You can... Uh, contact me through uh, the Facebook group. I also have a Facebook page and uh, TikTok. So there's so many ways you can get a hold of me if you'd like to send out the thread or the yarn to these women that are desperately need in need of it. I will send you their name and their address. You're more than welcome to do that. And we're grateful and humble by it. Thank you so much. So most of the time I use a 3.5 hook, small one to tuck in loose ends, and of course a pair of scissors. And 99.9% .9 of the time I use four ply 100% cotton thread. These are Portugal threads. It's equivalent the same thing as Aunt Lydia number three cotton thread. Okay, just a little tiny, a little bit small, uh, thinner, but not by much. So we're going to get started. I want to thank every single one of you again. I also would like to mention at the beginning of my videos when I first started two years ago, I did not know how to call the stitch names in English. So it, the first couple of dozen of videos, they're not well recorded. First, the app was terrible. So it's half screens, horrible. And because I did not know the name, um, I would just, you know, explain it my own way that I knew how. And I apologize for that. But if you go through some of those videos and you are creating those pieces, because there's some of you that have been texting me on it and questioning me, uh, please feel free to ask any questions. I am here to help you. Some of them I have recreated, of course, with the proper codes for the stitch calling. Some of them I still have to create. I just haven't had any time for it. But don't hesitate. Question me and I will answer you ASAP. We're going to get started. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay. And of course, if you have not subscribed, please do so and hit that bell notification for new uploads to be notified of the new videos that I uh, bring out every week. Okay. Okay, everyone. So this was a special request out of... Um, a member of one of the groups that I'm in and she wanted uh, for me to create a bigger uh, placemat and um, possibly without this edge just leave on this one or maybe create another different edge or something and she wanted on Christmas colors okay so I did uh, create on Christmas colors. The only difference that I'm doing here now, I'm just going to increase. So I'm not doing the tutorial all the way from the beginning because the tutorial is already out. I will leave the link below. If you want to create this Christmas one that I'm just going to finalize on the recording, then you can uh, go to the link, create until that amount that you would like, and then come back to this video. And finish it up. So these are the placements. For some of you that have missed it, this is one color placemat. The flower also the tutorial also is out. I'll leave the link below. Okay. 
and I have the autumn one in case you have missed it. So this is the autumn setup. Okay. So of course it looks all messed up because I've been just throwing it around trying to get my threads in and out. Okay. So now we're going to go and finish up with the Christmas one. And I didn't, I mean, you can do it in the green, gold, red, or white. I went with red and tan color with the gold. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the edge of the gold here, like we have here, we've been doing to all of them. And then I'm going to do another row of the red. Now the other placemats, they have only three rows of these. I'm going to go to the fourth row on it. Okay. So basically this is no different than what's on the other tutorial. Um, it's just slip stitch. Only difference is when you come to the, um, slip stitch here because it's a slip stitch you would just do a single and then next play a space slip stitch slip stitch let me get you a little bit more closer so very simple and then I'm gonna come back and prepare for the next We'll, we'll call it paddles or half moons or whatever you want to call it. Now, I did create the flower for this one. I wanted the flower to be different. I mean, we always do the red flowers or the green flower. I mean, you could do it in green and gold also or mix red, green, and gold. Um, so many ways you can play with it, right? So I wanted the flower to be different. I didn't want to just do in red. I mean, the most common thing is the red and gold. So I went ahead and did this one. Um, okay, so I don't have the flower hooked on the uh, ring, but it will give you an idea of what it looks like. So it's a little bit different instead of being, you know, the red and the gold or golden red, um, if you're doing greens, you know. I wanted to make it different. So, there it is. Okay, let's continue on. So, I'm doing the single here, where my single, I a slip stitch, and then going into slip stitch, slip stitch, on each one okay so you'll see that on the tutorial if you're creating this piece for the new ones because I know the ones that requested are creating it okay and then I'll be back to you with the red okay so I'm coming in with the red slip stitch knot it's no different than all of the other ones that we did we're just increasing that's the only thing we're doing here so you'd come behind your first loop on that single we did with the gold or whatever color you're using. One, two, trying to tuck in my loose end. Three, four, five, six, and seven. For some of you that have a tight stitch, you can do an eight chain. So basically I have three for double crochet and five for um, the V, we're creating Vs. To a little bit closer here. Okay, so because we are increasing, we need to do more chains here. Two, three, and four. I'm gonna do four chain. I'm coming behind and I'm grabbing the first um, loop here on the single that we did with the gold double crochet one two three four 
five. Actually, we need to do more at six. I'm doing six, which is okay, because usually the first one is always the largest one, right? So six chain, because we need to add um, here. We did 13 double crochets. We're going to add two more inside of this one. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So four chain for um, space. Coming behind, grabbing the first loop on the gold. Then you have the second one here, as you see, that will be for the other double crochet. So double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the second loop here of the gold chain there, little loop. Then we do double crochet. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is how we're going to proceed all the way around. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I've come to the end. I did my four chain. I'm coming in. So we did the single here. One, two, on my third one. Coming in with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to do one two, three, get you a little bit of a close-up. And then inside, we're going to do 15 all together with the three chain that we went up. So three, three chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We're adding two more, fourteen and fifteen, because we started this one here with nine, eleven, thirteen, and this one's fifteen. Okay, so now. Because we have 13 here, we're going to count from here. One, two, three, four, five. On your sixth double crochet, you have to go underneath the, the uh, uh, four chains in the back, okay? Make sure you do that. You have to grab those four chains behind it. So again, we're going to repeat the same thing directly into the sixth chain here. And do our 15 double crochets again. So very simple, nothing to it. So I have two, four, six, eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we have our 15. Again, we're going to count where the double crochets are. We're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, on your sixth one right behind the gold you have that little chain there and slip stitch and then you go directly into the six chain V's that we created and continue to do your 15 double crochets so nothing really different than what we did with the other ones the only thing that's different is we're doing increase of two double crochet instead of 13 we have 15 so continue yours I'll continue mine and I'll meet you at the end everyone I was saying to close in on on your sixth but it's not your sixth. sorry on your seventh double crochet I don't know why I said six six was on my mind one, two, three, four, five, six on your seventh double crochet. 
and you slip stitch. For some reason, I have six in mind. I don't know why. Okay, and then proceed your 15 double crochets. Okay, so on your seventh. Okay, everyone. So we pretty much arrived at the end. I've closed in my seventh double crochet. I'm coming in the third chain here that we went up. Actually, I thought I had my thicker hook on, but it's always my stitch that's very tight. Okay, then we're gonna cut it. We're gonna tuck in the loose ends. We're going to come back with the gold and do the same thing as we did here. We slip stitch. So just tuck in back here on the loops to make sure that nothing comes apart. So oh, slip stitch knot and on this one because it's such a slippery thread I like to leave it a little bit longer to make sure that we tie it well at the end because it can come off easily it's like a silky thread if you know what I mean okay so I'm going to come in where we have that slip stitch I'm going to do a single next face slip stitch right through it. I always try to find a way to hide my thread, which is almost nearly impossible this way, but still try whatever's left over. I will tie it in somewhere. I'm doing slip stitch, but I'm trying to hide my thread here at the same time by going back and forth on it. should be good. I hope I'm good. If not, I will just um, tie, tuck in the wrist. Okay, so we continue. Slip stitch, slip stitch, all the way through. But I'm not going to cut my thread, okay? I'm going to use this for the edge so my pattern can really stand out. I don't, I'm not going to use the the 10 color. Okay, I could have, but I want it to be different than the others that I've already uh, created the edge. So we'll just have a different color. Okay, so I'll meet you at the end. Okay, you guys, so I've reached the end. I'm going to come right behind it over here and pull a slip stitch through it. Actually, I'm going to grab from the back right between where we did the single here with the gold I'm going to pull this to the back uh, my hook is quite small so I don't want to pull all the threads but just trying to get that one thread coming back here Okay, so I got my thread back here. Now I'm going to skip the first, the second, 
and I'm going to come in first I should just um, go through here let me see how I'm gonna pull this I mean if you want to cut your thread that's fine I'm gonna use a smaller one to get myself to the third one because I really didn't want to cut the thread but if you find it easier I'm just gonna come from back here and try to get my thread somehow in there so I'm coming from the back to the third if this works out let me see so we have one two three on the fourth okay I think I should be okay with this one Yeah, so it should be okay. So on my fourth one, two, three, just make sure one, two, three, one more. Okay, so I'm going to come one more in here. Nine there. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm on my fourth one. But if you want to cut your thread, you can go ahead. Just wanted to get my thread to go in there on the fourth space because I really didn't want to cut it. So one, two, three, and four. Three for double crochet, one for space. I'm coming into the next space and doing double crochet. One chain, next space, double crochet. One chain, next space. So we have one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to do one, two, three chain. I'm coming into the next space, double crochet. Next space. Whoops, we need to do one chain space. So all of them is one chain space except for this middle one. Okay, so it's a little bit different. I mean, it's similar edge just the difference with the chain here the other one we have all one chain this one's three okay one chain now let me count from this side one two three and four so four and four so this is not good i need to do one more sorry about that people sometimes i have to play around with it a bit wonder if my light is on yeah that's better i thought it was i was saying dark okay so we have four on your third double crochet so like i said if you wanted to cut your thread instead of like you know going through all these maneuvers in, in and out of the double crochets. Um, right into the one, two, three, on the fourth, the fourth space. Okay, so we have four. I'm gonna do one chain and double crochet. One, two, three chain, I'm coming into the next one double crochet one chain into the next one double crochet one chain into the next one double crochet one chain and into the next one so we have one two three four and five and I'm coming into the next one because I want to have five in one side and five on the other with a three chain in the center. So here there is no chain. So we're going to skip one, two, three. We're going to come into the fourth one and double crochet one chain. So we have our first double crochet. Next space, double crochet one chain. That's our second double crochet. Double crochet one chain. Our third, our fourth, I should say one chain and our fifth okay one two three 
into the next space. So we did three chain after our fifth. And now we're going to do five double crochets on this side. Okay. Now, if I was to put the tan color, it would also look beautiful. But I think this gives it a much richer uh, look on the table for Christmas. Right? Again, skip one, two, three, and on your fourth. one chain next space now you could use back loops only if you wanted to it gives you that extra effect with the red in between them and that's what i was supposed to do but for some reason i got carried away and went on so i'll leave it at this but it will look beautiful if you leave the if you're using back loops only uh, it will give that beautiful red in between it in between the gold I think it still look, looks stunning, right? One, two, three. So we did the five double crochets. Next space. One chain. Okay, so continue on. Do your five double crochets on one side and your five double crochets on the other. And make sure you have your three chain in the center right after your five double crochets. And you go directly into one, two, three on your fourth one. So I'll meet you at the end. Okay, you guys, so I've reached the end. There's a lot of bling bling here with this gold ring. It's very shiny. And I'm going to close it in with a slip stitch. But when you got this thread, I'm going to pull this thread to the back. Okay, so I'm going to come in in between where we have the one chain. And I'm going to do one, two, three. And I'm going to do peacock. Next space. Single, one, two, three, chain. Peacock. Next space. Single one, two, three, peacock. Next space, one, two, three, peacock. Next space. Now, here we're going to do single one, two, three, peacock. We're going to come back in, single, one, two, three, four, five, six, close it in with single, I'm going to come back in, single, one, two, and three. So we're going to have two peacocks of three inside of the same space with one of six chains. Okay. So two peacocks in the middle here and of three chain and one of six. So very simple, not complicated. And then we continue one, two, three. Neighbor's dogs are going crazy again. Must be the cat. Call him the guard field. He's coming around to, to bug the dogs. It's never a dull moment in this place. One, two, three. And pick up. So all you have to remember is you must have the same uh, quantity of peacocks in one side. So we have one, two, three, four. And we have one, two, three, so we need to do this one. One, two, three. Okay. And I'm going 
to come in the same space to close that peacock off, okay? And then directly into the next space for the next motive, okay? So one, two, three. And it will be repeatedly like this all the way around. And that's about it. One, two, three. So you're going to have your four peacocks in one side and four peacock in the other. And your three on the center. Two small of three chain and one of six. So we're coming in the center again. How beautiful that looks. So one, two, three chains. So we do our first peacock here on the center. Come back in with a single. One, two, three, four, five, six. Close it. Come back in with a single. And one, two, three. So all in the same space on that three chain space we did here. And come back in again. So now we have the three peacocks in the center here. And then you'd continue. Now, don't forget that at the end, when you do your peacock, you must come in and close it in the same space, okay? One, two, three. Peacock. So we have our first peacock. We have our second. We have our third. Now we're going to create our fourth, which is on the last one. Okay, and we're going to come back into the same space with a single, okay, then directly into the next space. One, two, three. And why we're doing it this way, because I don't want that peacock to be coming over the single here. I want them to match up the same way. If I didn't do the single here and I go right directly in here, the peacock would have stayed there in the middle and I didn't want that. Okay. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope for the women that requested it, you enjoyed it. I will have it on display at the end. And, um, Thank you so much again, everybody. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up on the video. It's extremely important. And I will see you on the next tutorial. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.